So these are the uh, tray seeds that you gave me two years ago. It took them, took them a year to germinate. Um, I had to cycle them through warm and cold a couple times to get them to germinate. But then once they finally germinated, I'd say they grew quite well. Have you noticed, like the ones that I have, have you noticed they put on a spring flush of growth? And then again late summer they get yes, another small I have noticed that. flush? I've not seen any other conifer that does that. Um, your broom does that. Oh, does it? <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Um, you know, put out this growth this year, then some oh, yeah. buds break again, okay. and you get another flush. It's, it's really odd for them to do that. You can see the upright growth from the base of the plant that could potentially be rooted into another tree form, Toria. Yeah, they're beautiful little plants. I, I plan to let them grow at least a couple more years in the nursery uh, before I put them out in the gardens or anywhere else in the arboretum. Just because something like this is easy to be damaged or lost. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get them up to about that size. And I think. A grove for them would we actually we all think that a grove for them would be really ideal. Yeah, I, I, I agree. want to take her over and show the um, red on redwood grove, okay. which is the which is the grove to see yep. here. When were these um, uh, seeds planted, and how long did it take for them to germinate? These were planted in 2012, I believe. Um, and it took them about a year to germinate. I actually didn't think that they were going to do anything. So I, I brought them out of the, the cold stratification and planted them, and they just sat there. Uh, so I put them back in cold and brought them back out, and they just sat there. And then I was about ready to give up on them, and I saw the radical emerging from pretty much all the seeds. And then I was like, all right, well, I will keep these, and then I'll look at them. So that's, that was two years ago finally decided to grow. Now what's your sense about um, um, whether they're going to get root bound in there? Are you going to transfer them to bigger pots before yes. you put them out? Yes, I will do that. Um, I don't plan to leave them in here much longer. These will probably get shifted up to a three gallon uh, this fall. So that way they don't get root bound and so you don't get the circling roots. No, I'm not going to look because it's not a three um, If they do happen to get root bound, we can tease those apart when we transplant them and help to, uh, to retrain that. So. Great. Well, let's also take a look at where you're thinking about putting them in ultimately. Okay. I haven't selected that yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's full time. This is where they were. Wow, so so you're growing them in full sun? Yeah, full sun. And they like that? Yeah, they do. Okay. Well, what about the winter? What happens here in the winter? In the winter, we cover it with a double layer poly, and it's inflated to help insulate it. And then it's also kept above freezing all winter. Okay. So they're protected pretty nicely all, all summer, oh, or all winter. I didn't realize this was heated. Mm -hmm. so what we keep it uh, just right above freezing, Okay. so we don't let things freeze solid unless it gets really cold then sometimes they do. This past winter the Torias I have are out in brilliant hot full sun okay. on the front hill of my property and this past winter with the cold temperatures we had and the wind that whips down Pleasant Valley Road the trees were very badly windy. Uh, I wasn't sure how well they were going to do. They recovered wonderfully. Really? They put on about eight, ten inches of new growth. Really? One of them that didn't have a leader finally grew a leader. Hmm. And they're looking really, really, really well. I've been doing some planting up in like Michigan and wild forest and we've got a guy in New Hampshire. We're really trying to see how these things can do in wild forest. But uh, what Fred's done for us here in the Cleveland area is his trees without any blanket 
made it through what, three nights of 17 below and then three nights and then how how long did you have it like minus five or or colder than that there were probably a week or ten days worth of nights where it dropped that cold it every day though it it warmed up back above zero but it was a really bad winter for everything and so your Tories did well and uh, a lot of it of each of those Tories was under the snow but but even the part above the snow did okay and really and truly on that front hill with the wind whipping they did not have a whole lot of snow protection wow because they're I mean they're right on mm -hmm. the slope mm -hmm. so and also talk about your experience with deer in terms of what you have to worry about with the deer or yeah, not you will have to protect them not so much from them eating in eating uh, they will they will taste the new growth, okay. but they don't eat it. Okay. But you will have to protect the trunks from the bucks. Okay. Because I had one that one was they rubbed right down to the ground, which is re-sprouting, and one that they rubbed the side off of and it recovered without a problem. How large was it? The one in the woods that they got down to the ground was only not much bigger than these. Okay. And the one in the front yard that they got was is now about Three foot. Okay. We will do that. Yeah. So, in other words, once you decide to put put those babies out, they're they're not going to be they're not going to need a whole heck of a lot of help. Now, how bad is your deer situation here? We don't really have problems with deer around here. Then rubbing. That's about it. Okay. All well, right. Dozens of deer. Sure. You're, you're in more of an urban area oh, than yeah. we are, so yeah. And you have hunters around here. Yeah, we don't we have, have hunters, hunters around us. So. Oh, good. So you actually have the hunters that that keep your deer population. Well, not on Ohio State property. Uh -huh. We're not allowed to discharge firearms on the campus. That would not be a good thing. So <laughs> can't uh -huh. do that in the arboretum. Um, uh -huh. But there are people that hunt around the campus. Great, great. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. Paul, what's your last name? Snyder. Paul Snyder at Seacrest Arboretum, which is the uh, Ag School Arboretum for Ohio State University. All right. Thank you. So this is the area where the Seacrest Tereas will likely go in. Fred Bess and Paul Snyder and I just conferred on this. Uh, nice field in here. A couple of white pines, so perhaps the symbiotic fungi with the roots of them will work well here. But you can see there's also a couple of other different conifers in here, including some cedar arbor vitae type and very spectacularly here. Here is their rather famous grove of dawn redwoods, meta sequoia, right here in Seacrest Arboretum. This is the stand of dawn redwood. Uh, seeds arrived here in 1954. This is Seacrest Arboretum's signature tree. They propagate this and, and send it all over the country. How do they propagate it? Uh, it can be propagated from seed or from cutting. Uh -huh. uh, cutting grown trees tend to have more of a straight, not very interesting trunk, whereas seed grown trees, that are at least the ones that are grown out in the open, have a really fluted trunk with big branches that grow out from the base. These, because they're planted in a grove, don't have that form. Right. But they do show us how capable this tree is of uh, reaching whatever canopy it needs to reach in, in order to get sunlight. Not bad for being 60 years old. No. It's younger than me.